Hi, Nick Ravel here with Public Quartet, bringing you some thoughts and suggestions on how to work on tone. We'll explore what tone is, the techniques for achieving various kinds of tones, and how to work on them in a chamber situation. Tone has multiple definitions. We're gonna explore tone as timbre, which in my definition is how densely packed it is with overtones. Let me demonstrate. I'm gonna play for you a sine wave, which has very few overtones. As you can hear, the sound is very soft, smooth, and supple. Now I'm gonna play for you a sawtooth wave, which is packed with overtones. You can clearly hear the difference in the tone or the timbre. In the world of acoustic wind instruments, Clarinet, for example, has very few overtones, while the oboe is packed with them. And this is actually the reason why we tune to oboe and orchestra, is because it's easier to match pitch to sounds that are packed with overtones. String instruments have a wide array of tones available, um, but before we get into that, let's play a short passage from Dvorak's American Quartet in the second movement. Let's experiment with tone in a group setting. First, we need to understand that to make any tone on a string instrument, you have to find the corresponding ratio between both speed, contact point, and weight. Let's take a look at those. The extremes often found in contemporary music are from flautando to overpressure, or as I like to say, garbage sound, to Ponticello. When working on these techniques, it's important to distinguish dynamic, the volume you're playing at, with tone, the type of sound you're playing at. In reality, it's actually impossible to separate these two things, but in a rehearsal situation, it's helpful to isolate them. Listen to what happens when Janina plays from the fingerboard to the bridge. You can clearly hear the sound change from airy to dense until the string can no longer support the bow and cracks. Now let's see what happens when she just changes the speed of the bow. And lastly, listen to what happens when she changes just the bow weight. Let's explore tone in rehearsal. So for this example, Janina, the melody, will play with a wide variety of tone, while the accompaniment plays with a very flat, static tone. And now let's switch it. So the violin will play with a very flat static tone while the accompaniment will play with a wide variety of tone. <clears throat> In this passage,
passage, the melody happens twice. So when violin one plays it, we'll experiment with a relatively dense tone. And then when cello plays it, we'll experiment with a relatively airy tone. You should hear a pretty big difference. <laughs> You may find that working on tone with the sound of your instrument right at your ear sounds different than a recording. Make sure that you record yourselves from a distance so that you can hear what an audience member will hear when they're listening to you. You can experiment to your heart's content with tone. We're going to play this one more time for you and play what we think is an appropriate amount of tone variation. As you can see, the three variables, bow speed, weight, and contact point, can make a whole range of sound possibilities on our instruments. In my experience, playing with a slightly denser tone in a chamber situation makes it easier to tune and blend with your colleagues. Of course, the trade-off is that if you push it too far, your tone might become flat and boring. In the end, it's really up to you and I hope you've learned something from this video. I hope you take some ideas back to your chamber group. And we want to thank you for watching our video. Happy practicing.